Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel and my second no by year. For today's video I have a very long overdue update to my no by year in general. So I did miss my June update so this video is just going to cover um, how things went for both the months of June and July been a bit slack about filming videos lately I've just had a lot of stuff going on pretty much the weekend like Saturday afternoon is usually my only chance that I get to film and I had a couple of weekends in a row where I had sort of stuff on on the Saturday afternoon so it just kind of fell a little bit behind I don't really get a chance to film during the week because Monday and Friday nights I usually go to the gym after work Tuesday and Thursday nights I go roller skating after work and Wednesday nights I have Spanish class after work so I just have kind of like every day I have something um, and then yeah um, so anyway um, and I did also which I'll get into a little bit later in the the update I had um, like a new hobby that I've started that I kind of got a little bit addicted to and kind of spent a lot of time doing that um, in the last month so probably yeah missed a little bit of filming because of that as well so I will um, get into um, yeah how I've been going with my no buy these last two months um, so unfortunately I haven't really had a great two months sort of spending wise I had a few kind of like big ticket items that I um, had to purchase that I'll sort of go over what they were but I also got a little bit slack about tracking my spending um, and I should say as well with these updates I make notes on my phone so I probably looked down a lot because I'm reading um, some of my notes off my phone um, so uh, to the two sort of really biggest expenses were I got a new phone and I also had um, my professional association membership fees which is just like a once off expense per year but it is quite a, a fair bit of money and so I think because of that I kind of knew that my spending in June was going to be really high and then I thought I think I just kind of didn't want to know how high it was going to be so I sort of got a bit behind on um, tracking my uh, spending that I do um, just in an Excel spreadsheet and so yeah I think because of that because I kind of didn't wasn't as aware of how much I was spending I think I did make a few more sort of little in between like eating out getting a coffee or something like that purchases that kind of add up whereas if I am tracking my spending and I know how I'm doing for the month I think having that more awareness does help me keep those little um, sort of small purchases in check because yeah I can say look I'm haven't been doing great with uh, money this month so I should really tighten the belt and and kind of forego the the coffee here or, or um, you know having a I don't know a a piece of cake there or, or something like that whereas if I know um, no I'm actually going really well with spending this month so I think it's okay to kind of have a bit of a treat so yeah I think that that was a bit of a mistake and yeah it was just kind of me being a bit um, like sort of yeah putting my head in the sand knowing that I spent a lot of money but not wanting to know how much um, if I had just been like, look, you know, these expenses were unavoidable. Yes, your spending is going to be high. It probably would have helped me sort of be a little bit more frugal with other in other areas where I probably could have um, been a little bit, yeah, a bit, bit more careful with spending. Um, so and then the other sort of, I guess, side effect of that I spent a fair bit of money look most of it was on those two big purchases that I couldn't avoid but um, yeah I wasn't able to keep up with my um, savings goal which is at the moment my goal is to be saving 70% of my income so I am now a few weeks behind with that but I'm hoping I'm trying really hard for August um, we're already sort of halfway through August by the time I'm filming this I am going to try really hard through August September to be a bit more careful with those sort of small purchases that do sort of eventually uh, cumulatively add up and hopefully if I can be a bit more careful with those kind of things then I will be able to catch up um, with with my goal I think once it gets to probably about three months if I'm still behind I'll just say look those weeks I didn't meet my savings goal and just kind of move on like it doesn't really make sense to be you know trying to catch up from things that happened sort of months and months and months ago um, so in terms of the actual numbers in terms of my spending for June uh, my spending was actually up 36% compared to my pre no buy levels which was split into a 29% reduction in non-essential spending and a 205% increase in essential spending so yeah while I did reduce my non-essential spending compared to my pre no buy average um, this was the first month where I spent more money in the month than what I had previously uh, that what I was spending before I went 
um, on the no buy and I guess when I say my no buy spending what I did was before I started the no buy I think for three months so for um, October November December of 2020 I logged my expenses I wasn't on a no buy at that point but I was tracking my expenses and I just averaged the monthly spend um, for those three months is what I'm calling when I refer to my pre no buy spending which I know is you know if I had a longer period of time where I had been tracking my spending it would be a bit more accurate but um, it's kind of the best estimate that I have um, so yeah pretty much most of this was from the new phone and from paying my yearly association uh, membership fees for work and so both of these two purchases together came to just over three thousand um, dollars so and yeah the association membership fee is kind of a non-negotiable um, expense and it's just once a year um, so I kind of knew that that was coming and then but in terms of the phone um, I sort of did say at the start of my no buy that technology would be a no buy unless it was yeah a, a necessary purchase so I personally think that in my situation I don't consider it to be breaking my no buy because my old phone had just become completely unusable um, about 30% of the hard drive was just not available like you can go in an iPhone you can go into like the storage and it tells you the breakdown like photos apps blah 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 and there was just this about 30% of it was just grayed out that it like effectively had deteriorated I, I guess um, and so yeah I was at the point where I only had the bare minimum of apps like all the apps that I actually use on a daily basis and then if I wanted to use another app I was having to delete a couple of apps to make room download the new app use it and then delete it um, kind of thing I was pretty much every week transferring photos off um, my phone onto my computer or sometimes even more frequently than that and and the battery was really failing and I'd already replaced the battery twice so um, yeah like for example I would be on 80% battery and after a five minute phone call I'd be down to 20% um, battery so yeah I felt that it really had come time I sort of held on for as long as I could um, and I thought maybe some people might be interested in how I went about replacing the phone so I did do a fair bit of research um, before I did purchase the new phone about how to get the best value for money on um, a new phone and what I decided to do was to actually purchase an X demo phone so it had been um, a demo phone in just like an electronic shop where people can come and you know have a little bit of a go on the phone I guess but it hadn't actually been like used by someone as their phone um, and so I did decide to go for a fairly current model because my old phone was about six and a half years old so I figure if I'm gonna have a phone for that long of a period of time I may as well when I get a new one get whatever the most current um, model is and not one that's kind of already becoming a little bit obsolete um, so in the end I purchased my phone through a website called ozmobiles.com.au it's ozmobiles.com.au and the model I did get was the iPhone 13 Pro Max <laughs> um, so I know it's a bit at odds with being on a no buy in the 256 gigabyte size and so on that particular website they have various sort of grades of the condition um, so they have new x demo excellent very good and good and they kind of tell you at each level like what you can expect um, the condition of the device to be um, so i opted for one that was an x demo i think just because um like they don't have I guess because they're selling sort of secondhand devices um, they don't always have like every device in every size at every condition kind of thing um, so I kind of yeah had a look of what I thought I would like and then what the sort of discounts that they were offering and and some of them like if you get ones that are new so the ones that they say are new they've literally just been open for quality control like the box has been open so the box won't be sealed um, but those ones I think you only save about 3% off the sort of recommended retail value so for some of them I think the discount is probably not that great and then others you do get a, a better better discount um, so yeah the one that I got was an X demo one which they said would have no obvious scratches but um, may have some slight imperfections upon close inspection and the, the the one that I in particular got honestly was in perfect condition the only sort of 
imperfection or scratch or anything like that was actually on the box the box had a little scratch on it but yeah I mean who who cares about the box um, and it does come with a standard um, 12 month warranty as well um, and so yeah this was the first time that I had purchased technology secondhand and honestly I was quite happy with the experience I probably would do it again I did do a fair bit of research um, there's a few different um, online shops in Australia where you can buy secondhand phones um, and I felt that from the research that I did it seemed like Oz Mobiles had the best kind of like customer service that if you weren't happy with the product um, that yet yeah, yeah that you were entitled to a refund and they did have a 30 day kind of like change of mind um, policy um, so but yeah I was pretty happy and the the model that I got I ended up it was about $350 cheaper than the recommended retail price and as far as I'm concerned it was basically a brand new phone so I was pretty happy with that um, they do also give you the option to trade in your old phone and then get like more of a discount um, from trading in your old phone um, I didn't go for that because my old phone was in really poor condition so um, I think they said that I would have only gotten about $40 for it um, so I've actually just passed it on to my dad who is using it at the moment just because he has some hearing aids that were not very compatible with his Android phone and they said if he used them with an iPhone they would work better so he's kind of just using my phone at the moment to sort of trial it out and then he's actually thinking to also maybe get a new phone from um, Oz Mobiles just because I had a really good experience with it so um, yeah. Um, then so in terms of July, um, so I did slightly better with spending in July, but it still wasn't great. So my spending was reduced by 13% on my pre no buy average and that is split into a 37% reduction in essential spending and only a 4% reduction in non-essential spending so whereas in June a lot of my extra spending was on um, things that I couldn't really avoid um, most of my extra spending in July was probably on things that I could have avoided um, having said that though I, I don't regret um, any of the purchases that I made so um, probably the most expensive thing that I did was I upgraded my roller skates so um, towards the end of last year I bought some entry-level skates when I had just kind of started out doing it um, and I felt that now I've been doing it consistently um, yeah usually going a few times a week for the most part um, that I could justify kind of upgrading to a more comfortable boot um, so it would allow me to progress a little bit further I kind of got to the point where some of the moves that they were teaching us how to do because the entry-level boots most of them are made of vinyl so they're quite a stiff material um, whereas a lot of these sort of higher level boots are suede so softer um, material um, sometimes when I was trying to um, do what they call um, make an edge with the boot um, like the I don't know what you would call it like the knuckle of my big toe was pressing against the side of the boot and it was actually quite painful and I kind of couldn't really do the move because it kind of hurt um, so I decided to upgrade to like a more a softer more comfortable boot that will hopefully allow me to um, sort of progress further so yeah and also because they are suede I did have to buy some toe guards as well to protect um, the suede at the front of the boot from getting scuffed because if it gets too scuffed it can eventually like get holes in it um, I think I've got a picture of my skate so I'll put up a picture if anyone's interested to see what they look like I think they look quite cute now with the nice little toe guards um, and then apart from the roller skates I decided to actually teach myself to crochet so I bought a set of crochet hooks and some yarn for my first project. Um, so this is partially thanks to Andrea, um, her project Yarnathon had kind of inspired me to start um, like I've, I've known how to knit for a long time and I've always had it in the back of my mind that one day I wanted to learn how to crochet. Um, so yeah I guess that um, that that kind of like tipped me over into saying yep yeah, I'm gonna do it um, and uh, yeah so I guess like for some people I think starting a new hobby would go against the idea of being on a no buy but I personally feel like um, if a hobby can improve your sort of quality of life or provide you with enjoyment um, and it's not overwhelming in terms of the amount of stuff that you have um, based around the hobby I don't really have a problem with that um, and so yeah with the crochet as I said I'd learned to knit as a child um, and I remember years ago when I did a little bit more knitting I was like looking on Ravelry um, just at different patterns and I saw these really um, beautiful crochet toys like animals um, I think I'll see if I can um, share a picture um, 
of, of what one of them looks like. And I always said to myself that like when my close friends started having kids, I would teach myself to crochet and make um, one of these animals. Um, and so, yeah, I found out recently that um, uh, someone close to me is expecting their first baby. So I was like, all right, yep, gonna learn how to crochet now. Um, I didn't start with one of those. I started with a, a more simple project. So I started, um, I first of all, all just did like this, they, she calls it her like learned crochet master class. It's just a YouTuber. Her name's Sigoni Macaroni, I think. Probably not her real name. I think her real name is Sigoni, but I don't think Macaroni is her real last name. Um, and so she just has like this series of 14 YouTube videos. So I just made a bunch of swatches just with like some scrap yarn that I had um, lying around the house. Um, but and then when I felt confident to sort of start on an actual project, I just bought some yarn specifically um, for that project. So I made um, two little comforters. It's like I think they call them loveys. It's like the head and arms of, of a toy, but then the body is just like um, a little blanket. Um, so yeah. Um, and then like as a result of doing some crochet, I was like, oh, I haven't knitted anything for a while either. I think I want to take up um, knitting again. So I think what I've decided um, in terms of this whole sort of knitting crochet kind of realm of things that the rules that I'm going to set for myself are that I can only purchase supplies for one project at a time and I have to finish the project before I um, purchase supplies to make something else. And the second rule is going to be that I can only purchase supplies if it's related to a specific project because I think in the past um, I have had issues with craft supplies that I would just see something whether it was some yarn or fabric or whatever that I really liked and just buy it without actually thinking without actually having already a specific idea in mind of what I would do with it um, and then I think what happens is yeah a lot of the time it just sits there out of for months or even years not being used and then sometimes when you finally do think of a project that you'd like to um, use the supplies for you invariably have either too much or too little um, because yeah without a project it's hard to know you know how much of this um, should I actually buy um, so yeah um, that is yeah basically my rules are one project at a time and you have to pick the project before you pick the supplies. Uh, I think it would be fine if I saw some yarn and thought I really like that yarn I will find a project to do with that but I have to then decide on the project and figure out my yardage and all of that before I actually like pull the trigger and and purchase purchase the supplies um, so yeah um, thank you to everyone who's participating in that project yarnathon uh, project that Andrea started because I've been binge watching all of your updates and I'm really um, yeah can someone please <laughs> update their project so I can have another video to watch kind of thing because yeah I was just binge watching those while I was um, crocheting and knitting and so yeah I don't think I will ever get to like a marathon length um, but I am just keeping track I thought it'd be fun to keep track um, of where I'm up to so far so um, the two um, comforters that I've made I've um, given them to the, the person so I don't have them anymore but I'll put up a photo um, of what they are so um, the grey bear used 242 meters of yarn and the white bunny used uh, hang on that's not right one was 242 and the other one I think was maybe 207 or something like that I'll put the numbers on the screen but anyway in total it was 456 meters which is 1.09 percent of a marathon um, and so I'm currently now working on an infinity scarf that I'm just knitting for myself um, this one I didn't actually have to buy the wool for I bought this wool years ago I think actually like in the mid 2000s and I initially I had knitted a cardigan from it and then a couple of years ago, I just decided that it wasn't really my style anymore, but I still really liked the yarn. So I just um, frogged the cardigan and yeah, I've decided now to make this um, scarf, infinity scarf type of thing from it. Um, so I don't actually know how much wool there is, but I think what I might do is just measure out like five meters or 10 meters or something like that and weigh it and then just use the weight um, to estimate. So I'll show you that when I do actually have it here. Um, it's in progress. So it's this... Um, hopefully you can um, see it's a sort of it's a hand dyed Australian merino wool and the colors are sort of like this green um, purple um, and it's called the honey cow is the pattern um, and it's just like a yeah you do it's like a one row is knit and then this the next row you purl you alternate um, purl and slipping uh, like a slip stitch 
and then you knit and then the fourth row of the pattern you alternate the purl and the slip stitch again but the other way around so you slip first and then purl whereas with the um, second row you purl and then slip and it makes this sort of like I don't know they call it like a honeycomb pattern I don't know if I'd exactly call it honeycomb but it has like a nice texture um, and I think just like it has a bit of like a visual interest and I think it looks nice with the sort of um, yeah the the different colors so I'm probably about halfway through that I don't exactly know how much um, more I will do because you kind of just yeah the length is obviously set by how many stitches you cast on and then you basically just add rows until you're happy with the width of it um, so I think I want it to be a little bit wider but I don't know I've used up half of the wool so far I don't think I want it to be doubly as wide so yeah I guess I will just kind of yeah see how I go um, and then once I've finished it, yeah, I will just weigh the finished product and then um, use that to sort of extrapolate how much uh, wool I have used. Um, and then, yeah, lastly, I guess for this update, so in terms of things that I used up in June and July, I used up 18 things, which was worth $446.89. And that takes me to a total of 59 things used up for the year worth $1,121.20. Um, I had quite a few skincare and makeup empties, and I think I had a fragrance empty as well, but um, I also finished quite a lot of loose leaf tea as well. I'm almost out. I've almost finished all of the loose leaf tea that I have, so I probably will be making a, an order with tea too um, pretty soon in the future. Um, so I had three large foil packs, which from tea too, I think they're 250 grams, whereas their cubes, like the cardboard cubes, are only, I think, 120 grams if I'm not mistaken. So the three foil packs I had was a French Earl Grey, Eggnog and Creme Brulee. Um, and then I also finished a box of Hot Choc, which I have had earlier this year, and one of New York Breakfast, which I really liked. So I'll just quickly go through the tasting notes for the tea because some people seem to like hearing these. So French Earl Grey is honestly my all-time favorite tea ever. Um, and I think it's actually tea two's best seller. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy it. And that one, I'm definitely going to um, get that one again. So French Earl Grey. Earl Grey gets a French twist, which is oh so fruity. A medium bodied black tea base with pretty petals and notes of fruit that play with classic bergamot in an inspiring, bold and refined infusion. So I think the floral elements, I know there's sunflower um, and I think there's cornflower and hibiscus petals in there as well. I love that tea and yes, I will repurchase it indefinitely um so the next big foil pack i had was eggnog this one's pretty cheap actually because they um tea too sometimes if they have surplus left over from like their limited edition like christmas teas and stuff like that they then just package them in these foil packs and they're usually pretty cheap like about maybe 15 dollars instead of the big foil packs i think are usually about 40 dollars um so eggnog that sweet luscious concoction at the center of so many christmas traditions a delicious mess of creamy custard like flavors this yuletide treat is loved for its indulgent dessert flavors so yeah i really like that one too um, and then the last big foil pack i had was creme brulee so a decadent sweet tea treat velvety vanilla plays with caramel and smooth hazelnuts with full-bodied black tea an intense aroma that enhances a glorious infusion one that's indulgent yet classic enough to enjoy daily that one i really enjoyed too it has sort of yeah like that bit of vanilla and hazelnutty flavor to it and i actually did mix that one with hot choc which is the next one that i um will read the taste notes for because i really really enjoyed this popping praline tea that i had earlier this year but it's was limited edition you can't get it anymore but based on the tasting notes for that i thought that if i combined the creme brulee and hot choc i would get something pretty similar it wasn't exactly the same but it was pretty close in my opinion and i think i did about a three to one ratio of creme brulee to hot choc like i basically used the whole foil bag of the creme brulee with the box of hot choc and um or maybe it's more like a two to one um kind of ratio so hot choc, an ode to our favorite treat. This dreamy brew sees rich black tea get a perfectly decadent over the top chocolate hit with a sprinkle of cacao nibs, cocoa husks, chocolate drops, and a dusting of cacao powder. So yeah, I combined that one with the creme brulee to kind of emulate that popping praline tea that I had earlier this year. And then the last one was New York breakfast. And this one I loved as well. And this one I think I will get um, again. Um, so a full bodied black tea boasting the taste of hot pancakes inspired by a perfect New York moment moment. 
warm up the morning or sweeten your afternoon and be whisked away to the city that never sleeps um so this one they say it has um sort of hints of maple syrup and cinnamon flavor um in like a black tea so that one i love that one as well um so yeah i think that is my update for the last two months of the no by year if you're keen to follow along with um, my no by year in general i'm really going to try hard to be back to monthly updates for the rest of the year so yeah make sure you subscribe to my channel if you did like this video feel free to give me a thumbs up and please let me know in the comments below if you are potentially planning for no buy for next year i kind of think that yeah maybe towards august september october is probably when people would want to start thinking about if they were going to do a no buy year start thinking about um how they're going to set it up because i think it is a good idea to sort of um, particularly tracking spending for a little while before you start on a no buy year I think is a really or a low buy as well because I think it gives you a good idea of really where you could potentially cut back on your spending and where you don't really have that much wiggle room so I think now is a good time to start thinking about a no buy year or a low buy year um, if you are considering to do one next year and I'm already starting to think for myself about um, potentially how I would want my next year I think I will be on some kind of no buy next year but I'm just yeah, starting to kind of flesh out what 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 will my sort of rules be what will that look like will I change anything or will I leave it as it is um, but yeah that's basically all I have for today's video thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one bye